Psalms 18, one of my favorite Psalms. Psalms 18. Now, at the top, it says a Psalm of David. I know number, a lot of times we'll read the Psalms and, and just say that it's talking about David. No, this is going to, I'm going to tell you something right now. Psalm 18, David is prophesying about the last days. King David is prophesying the last days. First, give me that in Acts. Is it Acts 4 about David or Acts 2? Therefore, being a prophet. You know what I want? Let me flip. Hold on. You got it? One second. I'm coming. Acts 3. 2 and I want 29 and 30. Acts 2 verse 29. Watch this. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Patriarch means forefather. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried. David is dead and buried. Go ahead. And his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Watch this. Therefore, being a prophet. Therefore, being a prophet. Who's he talking about? David. Being a prophet. Go ahead. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh. According to the flesh. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So Christ would come from the lineage of David. Okay, so let's go on back to Psalms 18 about the prophet, the forefather, David. Psalms 18, we're going to start at verse 6. Psalms chapter 18, verse 6. Mm -hmm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. See that? David says, watch this, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. Y'all better put yourself in this Bible. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Go ahead. And cried unto my God. Mm -hmm. He heard my voice out of his temple. Now, watch out. For those of you who have read the Bible, what you're going to do is think, did this happen to, during the time of David or not? Read it again. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him. Even into his ears. So there's going to come a time when we cry to the Lord and he's going to hear. Go ahead. Then the that earth. That means, that means, that means, that means, that means something is going to happen here. That means something is going to happen here in the United States of America. Something so bad, something that we wouldn't even imagine that we're going to have to really call upon the Lord for. Watch. Let's keep going. Read. Watch this. Verse 7. Watch this after the Lord heard this cry we made. Go ahead. Then the earth shook. Then the earth shook. Go ahead. And trembled. And trembled. Come on. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken. And the foundations of the hills were moved and shaken. Go ahead. Because he was wroth. Because God was mad. Go ahead. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. And fire out of his mouth devoured. And fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Read. He bowed the heavens also. He bowed the heavens also. And came down. And came down. This did not happen during the time of King David. Let me say it again. This did not happen. You will not read any text of the Lord coming down during the time of King David. Read. And darkness was under his feet. And darkness was under his feet. Go ahead. And he rolled upon a cherub. And he rolled upon angels. Those are the so-called UFOs. Come on. And did fly. Yea, he did fly. Go ahead. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Read. He made darkness his secret place. Mm -hmm. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. This, this is so heavy you can't even describe it. Try, trying to imagine such a thing. Come on. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. When did the, David call upon the Lord and hailstones and fire and God came down? It did not happen in the scriptures. Read. Letting you know it ain't talking about back then. This is talking about this time, this day, this age. Come on. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. Read. Yea. He sent out his arrows and scattered Missiles them. Missiles he sent forth and scattered them. Go ahead. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. And it discomfited them. The them there is the nations. Read. Then the channels of waters were seen. This is so bad, so powerful, so omnipotent. The channels of waters were seen. Meaning what? The waters move out the way so you can see the bottom of the sea. Go ahead. 
And the foundations of the world were discovered and the by found, That's what it means. And the foundations of the world were discovered. Read. At thy rebuke. So when the Lord come down, you're going to see oceans parted. You're going to be able to see down to the deepest sea. Go ahead. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. At the blast of thy breath of thy nostrils. Read. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Give me that in Habakkuk 3.13. Write these precepts down. Write these precepts down. Habakkuk 3.13. That's all I want. That's all I want. The start of verse 12. Habakkuk 3 verse 12 and 13. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. The Lord's going to march through the land with indignation. Go ahead. Thou didst thresh the heathen. He's going to thresh and destroy the nations. Go ahead. In anger. In anger. Read. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. He went forth for who? The, the salvation of thy people. He's not coming to save. Can somebody tell a Christian that? Can somebody call T.D. Jakes and say, hey, listen. The Lord's only coming back for the salvation of his people. He ain't coming back to save all people on the planet Earth. Read that part again. Did you finish the verse? No, sir. Read it again. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. That's 13? No, I'm still, I'm reading 13. Okay. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. The head is America. When he discovers the foundation at the neck, means he's going to cut the head off. That's what he's saying. From there, give me Matthew 24, 30 and 31. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah, jump over to the troops. Jump over, just jump over to the troops in her backing. How can I forget that one? You're right. Book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. Thou didst strike through with staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The nations are going to come against the Lord, the King of Kings, to scatter him. Go ahead. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Their rejoicing was to kill the Israelites secretly. Go ahead. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, mm -hmm. through the heap of great waters. When I heard my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. So, so Habakkuk said, I want to be dead. I don't want to be alive when this happens. He said, when the Lord returns, I want to be at rest. That means sleep in the earth. Read. When he cometh up unto the people... He will invade them with his troops. That's why the white man put out all these damnable movies about space aliens with three heads and uh, uh, with Will Smith punching the aliens in the yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. And we got to unite against the aliens. No, no. They're making mockery of the scriptures. They're so confident that when Christ returns with the angels, they're going to win, they think. Well, yeah, what do y'all think Space Force is about? What do you think Trump created the Space Force to fight the law, because they know that this is the time, this is the day, this is the age. We're in that time period now. So you ain't got no time to be falling off. You following these idiots out there. I saw a group of Israelites arguing about having sex with concubines in the kingdom. What prophet went on the street arguing about sexing other nations? I'm like, these are not the people, Lord. These cannot be the people. Dumb ain't the guys. Dumb is not the guys. Con, con, out of one, con, con. Matthew uh, 24, 30 and 31. Can't make this stuff up. The book of Matthew chapter 24. Who sits down having classes about multiple wives? Hours upon hours about. The prophets did not do that. Con, con, out of one, con, con. The oil is gone. Jesus has left the room. Matthew 24 <laughs> left the building. Matthew 24, 30 and 31. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. This is what you're reading about. We're reading about in Psalms 18. Go ahead. In heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Read. And he shall send his angels. And with he a, shall send his angels. With a great sound of a trumpet. With a great sound of a trumpet. 
And they shall gather together his elect. And they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds. From the four winds. Go ahead. From one end of heaven to the other. From one end of heaven to the other. Give me that about the elect in Isaiah, please. I know right now, this is, for, this is only for the Christians listening. Because I know they're saying, well, the elect is anybody that believes in white Jesus. How wrong you are. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. The Lord's elect is only the Israelites. The Lord's elect is only the Israelites. If you're not coming as Israel, you ain't coming. You're not sneaking up as no Roman Catholic, Baptist, oneness, Pentecostal, born again, charismatic, speaking in tongues, washing the blood of the lamb. Madness. That ain't happening. You're going to die on that day. Back to where you was at in Psalms 18. Psalms 18. Read verse 16 again. Psalms chapter 18, verse 16. He sent from above. He sent from above. He took me. He took me. He took me. He took me. What does that mean? The angels came and grabbed us up. Go ahead. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me out of all the troubles that was coming my way. Come on. He delivered me from my strong enemy. He delivered me from... Was there any enemy strong enough for David? He remember, y'all forgot he, he killed Goliath? David slew all his enemies. So this ain't talking about David. David is prophesying about the elect in the last days. Read it again. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. And I'm going to help y'all with something heavy. Why is David talking like this? Because David's going to be here at that time. <laughs> Read that again. I know it went whoop over somebody's head right now. What is he talking about? Read that again, verse 17. Verse please. 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Go ahead. For they were too strong for me. For the enemy was too strong for me. Give me that. Give me that. Give me the prophecy in Leviticus 26. I think it's around verse 14, 15, 17, somewhere like that. About those that hate you. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall reign over you. We're here now. Those that hate us are ruling over us. We're here in the United States of America. We're here under Babylon the Great. We are here under Esau, Edom. And wherever you go throughout the earth, guess what? I don't care if it's an African nation or Caribbean nation. Esau is ruling everyone. Go back to Psalms 18, please. And verse 17. Psalms chapter 18. In verse 17, mm -hmm. he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my state. Read. He brought me forth. He brought me forth. Also into a large place. Into a large place. So notice verse uh, 16, he sent from above, he took me. Verse 19, it says, he brought me forth also into a large place. Go ahead. He delivered he me. He delivered me. Go ahead. Because he delighted in me. Ezekiel 20, 35. What is this large place? Ezekiel 20, 35. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, in verse 35. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. You see that read? Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. We're going right back to the same wilderness our ancestors was in. That's the large place. He's going to deliver us and bring us there. Right back in Africa, right back there in that wilderness in the northeast part, right there. Back to Psalms 18. Psalms chapter 18. Verse 19 again. Verse 19. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Read. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Notice this. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Go ahead. According to the cleanness of my hands 
hath he recompensed me. According to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed or judged me. Hmm, give me Daniel 7.22. He's going to reward us. He's going to reward us. What's that talking about? Daniel 7.22. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 22. Until the ancient of days came. Until the ancient of days came. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And judgment was given to the Israelites. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And the time came that the saints ruled the world. Revelation eleven eighteen, please. Uh -oh. Revelation eleven eighteen. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And the nations were angry. And when the Lord returned, the Bible prophesied that the nations are going to be mad as hell. All these nations talking about, oh, we can't wait till the Lord returns. That's their lying. The Bible prophesied when the Lord returns, the nations will be angry. Why? Because their time of rulership will be finished. Go ahead. And thy wrath is come. And the wrath of God is come. And the time of the dead. That they should be judged. And the time of the dead that they should be. That's us. We're the dead. Go ahead. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Go ahead. And to the saints. And to the saints. And them that fear thy name. And to them that fear thy name. Small and great. Small and great. And shouldest destroy them. Which destroyed the earth. And the Lord's going to destroy Esau. Because that's the nation that destroys the earth. But what I want y'all to see. He's going to, God's going to judge us in an instant. He's going to reward us in a moment, in an instant. Give me 1 Corinthians 15, 50, please. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 50. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So we're going to be in the wilderness. We can't enter the kingdom yet because flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. He's, now, this is a mystery. Everybody don't, ain't going to understand this thing right here, what I'm about to say, he says. Go ahead. We shall not all sleep. Everybody's not going to be dead. Go ahead. But we shall all be changed. He said, but this one thing I'll tell you, we shall all be changed. Go ahead. In a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. Go ahead. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Go ahead. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This corruptible body we all live in. He said it must put on incorruption. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. And this mortal body we all have must put on immortality. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death. That was it. Death going to be done. It's going to be finished for us. Go back now. Go on back to Psalm 18. And verse 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, and verse 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. Remember what he did in verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Give me Revelation 14 and 12, please. This is for you Creflo lovers out there. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Y'all see that? So we need them things. Them two elements right there, we must be performing those things. Keeping the commandments of God and have faith in the Son of God. Go back, Psalms 18. Psalms chapter 18, verse 21 again. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, 
And I kept myself from mine iniquity. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. Now that's heavy right there. I know you wanted to just read on, but you gotta sometimes you gotta pause a moment. He says, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Everybody in here has an iniquity they are battling with, they are struggling with. Guess what you better do? Keep yourself from it. That's why in Colossians 3, 5, real quick, this is why he's, Paul says this. But to hear Creflo tell it, you ain't got to do nothing. Really. Read that. Colossians 3 and 5. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore. Mortify your, means to deaden. Deaden, therefore. Go ahead. Your members, which are upon the earth. What members is he talking about that we must put to death? Go ahead. Fornication. Sexual sins. You better get a hold of that thing. Put that thing in check. He said, I kept myself from mine iniquity. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. That's a broad statement that covers a lot of things, whether it's food or sexuality. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. An inordinate. Deacon Abiel went over that last night. Inordinate affection. Evil. He showed a little boy jerking off to his daddy's picture. Damn. And they got that on YouTube. They ain't take that video down, but they're pulling our videos down. Yeah. The, all the immoral videos, leave that up. Right. But them videos about them keep teaching the commandments, pull that down. Yeah, it's a hate group. They're teaching God's commandments. That's hatred. The hell is this? Read that again. And so that's so inordinate affection. You menage de toi. Go ahead. I'm Mortify. Sorry. I just went somewhere. I went to darkness. Well, go ahead. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Inordinate affection. No, 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 pedophiles. Some of you, we, we, we got stories. Y'all something know what I'm talking about happened in North Carolina. He gonna, the Negro going to drive three hours to meet a 12-year-old. And she's telling the Negro, you know I'm 12, right? He says, age is nothing but a number. He going to do 70 miles an hour for a 12-year-old. For a 12-year-old. What kind of delight is that? Ooh. Then Chris Hansen opens the door. Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> you got the bag you said you were going to bring with the condoms and the beer? Let me see it. Bring it in. Put it on the table. That's inordinate affection, brothers. Well, did you finish that? No, sir. Evil concupiscence. Evil. Can we look up? Oh, oh, Alicia, I got one job for you. You got one job, Alicia. One job. Can you look up concupiscence? Don't jack it up. Or oh, you just got one job. One job. Concupiscence. Put it on the screen. Make sure ain't no pictures. Yeah, put it on the screen. You see what it read that? Concupiscence, strong sexual desire, lust. You, you hey, all you, uh, 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 what's the word? You stalker brothers. Uh -oh. That's concupiscence. You know you are, you know you got concupiscence. If you start stalking sisters, you got it. Yeah. Bro, she don't want you, but I want her. Bro, that's called stalking. All in the bushes, about to jump out. Fogging up the glass, her, her window. Yeah, trying to hide in the back seat of the sister's car. Y'all think I'm joking. It was two Passover go. Sister, tell her brother, remember we have the sisters come up. Sister's going to come off the stage and the brother talking to her. Shalom, sister. You know I've been looking at you and you've been looking at me. She said, bro, I wasn't looking at you. No, you're not my type. But thank you. She walked away. Damn. The brothers are... <laughs> you gotta watch them spirits yeah, yeah. she gets home she goes home from Passover had a great time she gonna come out and her brother's in front of her house in his car yeah I'm gonna make you mine sis. no I'm calling the popo cause you crazy I don't know why brothers wanna stalk you got, your brother ain't got no game she don't want you she ain't for you she was not made for you did you finish that? No, sir. Go ahead. 
I'll read it again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. You know men could be thirst buckets too, you know. Y'all be calling sisters thirst buckets. Some of you brothers are thirst buckets too. You just be drooling when you see a sister. Hitting the gym all day, trying to work. Yeah, you better hit the gym and work off your frustrations. <laughs> Go ahead, read that again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil... I don't see what enjoyment you got looking at a child. What kind? That's a special kind of demon right there. Or are you looking at an animal? Mm. Damn. You know, there's women that like dogs. Let me leave that alone. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead, Chate. Evil... Concupiscence. <laughs> What'd you say? Big dogs, and Big dogs and peanut butter. Damn. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 I don't know what he meant by that. You didn't know what I meant? No, I'm staying away from that. You know, college, in college. You, you did. Anyway, the, uh, Amazai, did you finish? Let, let me read it again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, now you can go a whole lesson on that. Covetousness, which is idolatry. So these are the ty type of spirits we must deaden, we must mortify. That's what, go back to Psalms 18 now. And what verse was that? Verse 23. Uh, verse 23 again. Psalms 18, verse 23. I was also upright before him. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. Y'all see that? Meditate on that a moment. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. Go ahead. Verse 24. Therefore, had the Lord re recompensed me according to my righteousness. Recompensed means judged. Therefore, have the Lord recompensed, judged me, re-rewarded me according to my righteousness. Go ahead. According to the cleanness of my hands. According to the cleanness of my hands. In his eyesight. In his eyesight. Now, of course, that cleanness, that righteousness goes with us accepting, believing in Christ. Hope everybody understand that. Coupled, coupled, coupled with keeping the commandments as a sign of faith. Go ahead. Verse 25. With the merciful, thou wilt shew thyself merciful. Mm -hmm. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt shew thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt shew thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people. See that? That's what it's taught. Verse 27 is clearing it up. All the while, while David's allegedly talking about himself, he reveals it right there in verse 27. For thou wilt save the afflicted people. Go ahead. But will bring down high looks. But will bring down the proud. That's the men and women that break God's laws. Go ahead. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Now verse 28. Verse 28 right there. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Remember, we all sin is this is the kingdom of darkness. He said he's going to take us from here, bring us to a large place, and he's going to light our candle. That means he's going to turn our spirits up. He's going to change us. That's what that verse right there. Give me that in Revelation uh, 2.28. What does it mean for, for thou will light my candle? The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Revelation 2, 28, please. Revelation chapter 2, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And I will give him the morning star. That's what it means. I'm going to give you the morning star. I will light your candle. I will give him the morning star. Was that it? Yes, sir. Jump back up to verse 25. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So you know what it means, hold fast till I come? Wait ye upon me mm. till the day that I rise up to the battle. Saying the same thing, wait upon the Lord. Read it again. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Read. He's going to explain now the candle being lit, the morning star being given to us. What does it mean? Go ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. And he that overcomes his own sin, her own sins. I kept myself from mine iniquity. And it says, and what? And keepeth my works. And keepeth my works, God's commandments. Unto the end. Unto the end. Go ahead. To him will I give power 
over the nations. To him will I give power, power, power over the nations. That's the reward. That's what Daniel 7, 22 was talking about. That's what um, Revelation eleven eighteen 18 was talking about, about us getting judged. That's what it's talking about. Read it again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Read. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. We're going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. We're going to have to break the nations to get them in order. I hope y'all understand it. The nations ain't going to run around doing whatever the hell they want. They have to be broken first. The same, did they not break us? Yes, sir. They broke the hell out of us. We're going to break them down in righteousness. We're going to return the history to the whole planet Earth again. The true history. The correct history. And all nations are going to bow the knees to the one true king. That's what they're going to do. Read that part again. Read that part again. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Mm -hmm. Even as I received of my father. See what Christ said? The same power I got from my father, I'm going to give to the Israelites. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And I will give him the morning star. Yes, he's going to light my candle. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what he the... He that has understanding, let him understand. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Give me Isaiah 41, 14, please. Isaiah 41, 14. Isaiah 41, verse 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 14. Fear not. Thou worm Jacob. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Hold that. I know you forgot already. Go back to Psalms 18. Why is he calling us a worm? Because in Psalms 18, let's see, he said, verse 17. Psalms chapter 18, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Here it comes. For they were too strong for me. For the enemies of God are too strong for us. Right now, you better believe it, they're too strong for us. You got, what's that group with the guns running around the land and all over? Listen, white man ain't got to pull no gun on, uh, what are they called again? NFAC. NFAC. All Esau got to do is turn off the water. Right, right. Right. Or don't sell them the bullets. They're going to run out soon. They're going to run out, cut off the water, don't let no trucks enter in with food. Right. We're going to starve them out. That's all they got to do. People don't understand. And cut off all, you know how the FBI get down. Shut down all electricity first. Boop, 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 boop. Yes. Hey, they're doing it now, Bishop. If you think about it, it's not, it's, it's in uh, parts. Because I've went to try to purchase uh, some bullets just to go to the, uh, the shooting range. Mm -hmm. They only allow you one box of ammunition. So they're doing it slowly. It's exactly. not right away. Exactly. It's in part. Mm -hmm. Black people don't understand. We don't understand. We don't see what's happening. We don't see what is coming. Thank you, Elie. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so once you in your neighborhoods, and they say, you know what? We want to we want to starve my shut off all the electricity in the neighborhood. What are you going to do now? Shut off the the flow of water. Right. What are you going to do? What can you do? Stop the trucks from bringing food in. Just give them a week. They're going to be starving. Like Marvin. They're gonna be crying, for crying to the Lord. Crying for where's, where's our Popeye's chicken? Right. Yeah, look at what he's doing with COVID. You better think about it. Just ponder it. So go back to Psalms 18 again. Read that part again. They were what? For they were what? I want that part. That's all I want. Psalms chapter. For they were too strong for me. For David said in the spirit about the afflicted people, about us, they are too strong for me. Back to Isaiah 41, 14, please. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. That's what I'm telling All the plans. Now, Ice Cube had a nice little plan set up. I don't know. Remember people got mad at him about trying to sit down and meet with uh, Trump? He sat down. He wanted to go on CNN. He had a, an economic plan for black people. Let me tell you something. There's no economic plan that's going to save us. If there was, Black Wall Street would have been the first ones. And what happened to Black Wall Street? 
And there's many black Wall Street. They bombed. And you know they got movies out revisiting what happened. The movie called Watchmen, that's on Amazon. They show what happened at Black Wall Street. And this new one, um, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. Love Lovecraft Country. Craft, Craft Country. They show you the evil that was done to Black Wall Street. And I know y'all think it could never happen again. How foolish you are. During Black Wall Street, we thought that would never happen. Right. Look at the movie Lovecraft Country. They were like, what's going on? It's, it's happened out of the blue. We be sleeping. That's, what did Trump say? Y'all be sleeping on your, on your president. He said, uh, I'm against tearing down um, the monuments. He said, we need history. Because history can repeat itself. Uh -oh. And that went whoop, right over black people's heads. Right over black people's heads. What does he mean that history can repeat itself? Yes. History. Can, I, can I say something about that? What you guys, what, what you guys don't understand is this. Some of you go for, yes, yes, tearing them down, tear them down. This is what Trump is saying. If you tear down all the monument, that's actually, the monument actually is to prove that slavery happened. Just in case some of you don't know. If you take them down, what you think happened? Now, they can erase total history and say, it's never happened. Because all the monument turned down. That's what Trump is saying. Some of you are so stupid, you go, yeah, yeah, tear them down. They're what you're doing is you erase history. You erase that slavery. Because right now they are only trying to say it. Trump cut, cut funds for any school that's teaching 16, 16, 19 project. What do you think they're doing? Little bit by little bit, they erase history. Now you come and take, listen, there's only one monument that's supposed to take down. I'm only for one monument, white Jesus. That's it. That's all you got to take down. Leave the other one. The other one represent that what happened to us. Not only in this country, but all over the world. Why, you, why would you want to take them down? That's what Trump is telling you. You take them down, that means history can happen again. That's what he's saying. You know the irony of it. Esau says, you know what? We'll do movies and change history and watch how powerless black people are. They did a movie on Harriet Tubman. Instead of the white man being the enemy, they have the black man as the enemy. And black people were powerless. The, it's the movie still out. It's on Amazon. No, black people, have, I don't eat the ones in Hollywood have no power. You see the history has been altered. They got the black man as the enemy trying to kill Harriet Tubman. Not the white man. The white man saved her. She loved the white man. And that's so far from the truth. But what have, what, were we able to do anything about it? No. The movie's still up for your sons and daughters to get brainwashed with. Back to Isaiah 41 and verse 14 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? What verse? That was... All of verse 14. So now, he says, fear not thou worm, Jacob. Why are we a worm? Because we are in captivity. We are powerless. Remember, this man, this man, this so-called white man, Esau, he has nuclear armaments, nuclear capabilities. He controls the flow of water in the water system. He controls the imports and exports of food and of clothing. He controls it all. So we are a worm here. We have nothing. We cannot. All the little economic plans is it's it's a. Give me some nice words. It's a band aid. It's a band aid on a bigger problem. Yeah. Thank you for being nice. That was verse. What verse was that? That was fourteen. Sorry. Read on. Verse fifteen. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Wait, wait, wait. What? Read. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. I want y'all to see this. This is the change in the twinkling of an eye. He went from calling us a worm in verse 14 to calling us, to calling us a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. Meaning so sharp, we going to be able... Watch what it says. Read on, read on. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. We going to thresh, meaning destroy governments. That's the mountains. Read. And beat them small. We going to beat governments small, the Bible's saying. Go ahead. And shall make the hills as chaff. We're going to make the hill, which are the smaller governments like chaff. Go ahead. Thou shalt fan them. We're going to fan the nations. And the wind shall carry them away. And the wind shall carry them away. Read. 
And the whirlwind shall scatter and them. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice. And we're going to praise the Lord. Go ahead. In the Lord. And shall glory in the Holy One of and Israel. And we're going to glory in the Holy One of Israel. From there, from there, from there. Give me Isaiah. Uh, um, give me what do I want, what do I want. Give me, some, go back to Psalms 18, 29. Psalms 18, 29. The book of Psalms. So that, that, what we just read about calling us a worm, then he says he will make us a new sharp threshing instrument. That's the change in the twinkling of an eye. When incorruption, when corruption shall put on incorruption, when mortal shall put on immortality. That's what it's talking about. Go back to Psalms 18 now, verse 29. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. We read this and go, oh, that's just, that's just, that ain't just David. Remember, he's talking on behalf of the afflicted people. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Watch this, Joel 2.7. The book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 7. Watch this. They shall run like mighty men. We're going to run like mighty men. Go ahead. They shall climb the wall like men of war. We're going to climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. And we ain't breaking ranks either. Read. Neither shall one thrust another. Ain't going to be no black on black. Ain't going to be no fighting each other. Go ahead. They shall walk everyone in his path. We're going to walk straight on. Go ahead. And when they fall upon the sword. And when somebody try to stab us or harm them with us with their weapons. They shall not be wounded. That's God talk right there. That's, That's God right. level right there. That's right. This is what you read about with Samson. You would sit, the bed, sit back and go, wait a minute. Wait. Not one spear. Pierced this dude's skin, not one arrow, not one knife. He was on God level. We going right back to God level. That's right. Going back to Psalms, please. Psalms 1830. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. We got to keep our trust in him. Come on. For who is God? Save the Lord. Mm -hmm. Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. See, that is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Go ahead. He, That's the same God that strengthened Samson. And the people couldn't believe it. The Philistines were shocked at what they saw Samson. Everybody imagine Samson as this big dude. No, he couldn't have been no giant big dude. Why did they keep coming? Because, you know, like with Goliath, people said, no, 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 we ain't fighting that guy. Look how big he is. So Samson could not have been like that. I want you to think for a moment. What would make tribes and just keep coming? Everybody's saying, I can, I can defeat him. And by the time they get there, their jaws broke, neck broke, back broke, legs broke. Dead, dead, dead. And bodies heaped up upon bodies, heaps upon heaps. Go, what the hell is this? <laughs> Read. Verse 33. Uh-huh. He maketh my feet like hind's feet. He makes my feet like, a hind is a deer, like a gazelle. A gazelle can run 50 miles an hour, an hour and leap tall buildings in a single bound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Read that again. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. Give me that in Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31. The book of Isaiah Chapter 40 and verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. That's what we, they that wait upon the Lord. He said, wait ye upon me till I rise up to the prey. Read that again. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew. Renew. Meaning the strength we had at one time in days long gone. We're going to get that strength back again. Read it again. But they that. He ain't talking about the strength you had last week. That strength ain't nothing. It's talking about the strength our ancestors had in the past. Read. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait, start up at 29. Let's start at 29. Verse 29. He give power to the faint. He give a power to the faint. Where the faint? Remember, what, give me that in Isaiah 51 and uh, 20, 23 about thy sons. 
Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. We have lost consciousness to God's truth. Go back to Isaiah 40, please. And verse 29, let's connect the dots. Verse, That's Isaiah. why the Bible says precept must be upon precept. Read that. I Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the saints. That's what Christ said in Revelation 2, is it not? It's the same thing. I, he giveth power to the faint. Read. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Who's increasing strength? God. Read. Even this is God love. This is God talk right here. Go ahead. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Go ahead. And the young men shall utterly and fall. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they but, that, but, but, read. But they that wait upon the Lord. See, everybody ain't going to wait on the Lord. You got some of our young say, no, we're going to go out and do our own thing. We got an economic plan. We got a military plan. Okay, but as for us in our houses, we're going to wait upon the Lord. Read that again. That's that but right there, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Our strength going to be renewed as in the days of old. Go ahead. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Stop right there. He's saying something right there. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. See, y'all y'all be reading things, just be reading. Give me that. Uh, let me show you some with Christ. Give me the Acts 1 and 9. Now be sleep. Y'all be asleep. The book of Acts. Y'all talking about the Matrix. You saw when Neo went up into the sky. You saw how Neo was doing his Superman thing. They got all that from the Bible. Mounting up with wings of eagles. Read that. Acts. Verse 9, I'm not looking at it. Is uh, that it? When he's taken up. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Read. That's it. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him he out of their sight. He was taken up in a cloud. So people is talking to Christ. Then they see him just, gravity just loose off his body. And the dude goes up, what the hell is this? That's why I read when the angels said, why y'all glazing up? We gazing up because we never saw a man fly. We never, ain't no angel come down and say, the angel's next to the people. He just, he said, I'm going to loose gravity around my body and I'm going up. Read that, read that part right there. He was, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him. And a chariot received him. Out Read. of their sight. Mm -hmm. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven. You got to imagine, all the people is like, what the hell? Did you, did you see this? Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel. The two men that stood by were angels that stood by in white apparel. Go ahead. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Let's go back to Isaiah 40. Damn. Isaiah 40 verse 31 once again. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead. They shall run and not be weary. You know how you run around a block and you're all out of breath? You know what I'm talking about, right? You're tired as hell. Some of us run 10 feet. We huffing and puffing. The hell is this? <laughs> you're on a treadmill passing out. So this Bible right here is saying the promises they shall run and not be tired, not be weary. Go ahead. And they shall walk and not faint. And we ain't going to faint in this day either. Watch this. Watch this. We ain't done. We ain't done. Give me Psalm. Back to Psalms 1834, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 34. Read 33 again for me. Verse 33. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arm. I want y'all to think, because many times we read and we go, this is David. No, it's more than just David. It's those that wait upon the Lord. It's the afflicted people. The Lord's going to teach us how to fight. We ain't got to go to no dojo no more. Right. We going to know how to fight in that day. Okay, we, we read it again. I just love the way it sounds. He teacheth my hands to war mm -hmm. so that a bow of steel is broken 
by mine arms. That's that strength right there. How many of us can break steel right now with a punch? Huh? I don't think anybody. Break your knuckles, maybe. It says, it says, a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Go ahead. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath, uh, hath and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. God's gentleness is gonna make us great. Go ahead. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. We ain't tripping, we ain't falling down. Go ahead. I have pursued mine enemies. I have pursued mine enemies, and the enemies of the nations. Go ahead. And what? And overtake us. That's why I said we shall run and not be tired. We shall walk and not be faint. The nations think they're going to get away from us. Nobody's going to escape the Israelites. That's right. Nobody. God level. Read. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. And I didn't turn again till the nations were beat down dead. This is what it's saying. They're going to be consumed. Go ahead. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They ain't going to ever rise up again. Go ahead. They are falling under my feet. Give me that in Micah 5 and 7. Micah said the same thing. He said the same thing. God level, brothers. God level. I know, sisters, we don't look like much right now. I know we're a bunch of niggas and we ain't right. We crazy, half crazy. But there's going to come a day when this is fulfilled. And we're going to wait for this. Give me that. Micah chapter 5 and verse 7. And, and guess what? If we're going to be on God level, they're going to be on God level too. And they're going to have these weak little bodies they got, not a little flabby, out of shape bodies they got. They're going to be built like Bibles, so they're going to be built like palaces. They're going to run and not get weary, too. They're going to walk and not faint, too. That's right. The hell is this? This ain't going to be a one-sided kingdom. A, a god needs a goddess. That's right. A king needs a queen. <laughs> Better understand this thing. This is what's going down. Read that thing. Micah chapter 5 and verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. We're going to be in the midst of many people, brothers. Come on. As a dew from the Lord. Meaning we're going to be everywhere. Read. As the showers upon the grass mm -hmm. that tarrieth not for man. Read. Nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest. We're going to be like a lion among the beasts of the forest. When a lion enters the forest, guess what the other beasts do? Run, including the elephant, who's bigger and stronger. The elephant said, let's get the hell out of here. Read. As a young lion. And not no old lion either. The Bible says we're going to be like a young lion. Go ahead. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. What, what can sheep do against lions? Nothing but be eaten. Become food. That's all they can do. Read. Who, if he go through. If the lion go through sheep. Both tread him down. The lion going to tread him down. And tear it in pieces. And none can deliver. None can, can deliver these other nations out of our hand once we get hold of them. Read. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries. The adversaries are the enemies. Go ahead. And all thine enemies shall be cut off. All our enemies shall be cut off. All our enemies shall be cut off. From there, go back to Psalms 1839, please. Psalms chapter 18, verse 39. Mm-hmm. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. You see that? Is God going to give us this strength? God level strength. Come on. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Everybody that rise up again is going to be taken down. Go ahead. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies. See that? The necks, plural, of mine enemies. Go ahead. That I might destroy them that hate me. That I might destroy them. Wait, 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 wait. You know what that goes with? That I might destroy them that hate me. Give me that Luke 1. Luke 1, 70, Juan, I think it is. Somewhere around there. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. We're going to be saved from the hand of all that hate us. Go back to Psalms 18 right there. What's that verse once again? Psalms chapter 18, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Thou has also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate you me. You see that? See that? Give me that now. Give me that next piece that just popped in my mind. I think it's Ezekiel 25, 14, somewhere like that. 12 to 14. I'm taking a guess. Ezekiel 25, 25 verse 12. I saw the 12. Okay. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking for vengeance. You, for all you Christians... Edom is the so-called white man. 
Edom is not black people. I got to say that because I, I got to pause. I got to size just for a moment. I saw a video by the Yaya's. You know the Yaya's, right? Those are, those are people. Those are brothers and sisters, but they're strange. They bang on bongos all day. And the women, they, 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 I don't know what they're doing. I've been to Voodoo Fest. That's what it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I went to the Haitian Voodoo Fest. And what I saw them doing there, I see in the Yaya congregations where the women is swaying like this and the brothers banging on the drums and then brothers just running through the congregation. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Nobody's seen these guys. They're here in Atlanta. Yeah. They're here and very strange. Very. Str I love them. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not hating. I love them, but... So my point was saying that was this. The Yaya, they taught a class. And the Yaya's use Genesis 36... Verse 1, can we get, I just got to show you what they did. I'm getting back on point. I know I'm, 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 I'm sidetracked, but I just got to, I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe what they did. They are so angry at IUIC and what, they didn't say IUIC, they said the One Westers. Right, right. They are so angry about what we teach and how we teach, they decide they're going to change the doctrine. One of them did a video and said, we're going to destroy the doctrine that Esau is the white man. So I said, really? I want to see how they do this. <laughs> this is what they did. Genesis 36, verse 1. The Watch book of this. Genesis, chapter 36, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. So they said, see, Esau married Hamite women. Read on. Ada, the daughter of Helan, the Hittite. Mm -hmm. And Ahilibamah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. And Bishameth, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebajoth. And Esau married Ishmael. Ishmael's daughters. So the Yahya said, see, people, if Esau's descendants married Canaanite women and Arab women... That means their children are all black. And they were going, uh, yeah, 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 dancing around. So I'm sitting there watching the video, and I said, this is amazing. So amazing. Amazing. Shout out to Jesse Lee Peterson. <laughs> so I said, this is amazing. So all Esau's descendants are black because God don't have the power to keep Esau's look pure through generations. He's powerless to do that. So then I sat back and thought to myself, no, this is on the radio show, as a matter of fact. I said to the radio host, I said, let's read Obadiah, just for a second. I said, let's, let's, hypothetically, let's play with that thought. All Esau's descendants are black. I said, okay. They're all black. Go to Obadiah now and read verse four. About Esau, read verse one, then jump to four. Obadiah, the book of Obadiah, verse one. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. So these are the Edomites, the children of Esau. Verse 4. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. What black race is doing space travel? Somebody help me. I want to know the black race that has set their nest among the stars. Read the verse above it before 3, 3, 3. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart. Have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Who? What nation? I want you to think. What black? In order to say who can bring me down means who can conquer me? Right. Who can make? In order to make that statement, let's say, nobody can bust my behind. Can't nobody beat me? You gotta have power in the earth. I'm looking through the earth now. What black? nation has power to say, can't nobody beat me. Where is this black race at? They, they definitely ain't in Africa. They it ain't in the Caribbean. Bishop, they won't even make a movie where they're the, the Ham, Ham won't even make a movie that they're the superheroes and whooping Esau's behind. Exactly. Not even a movie. Right. So back to verse 4. Obadiah verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle 
And though thou set thy nest among the stars. So my question, where is the black race who has power that no one could defeat them, that has power to set their nest among the stars? <laughs> if any of y'all follow these, y'all are simple as hell. You're talking about the Esau's descendants as black people. And black people are the Edomites. Y'all are crazy. Then another group said the Arabs are the Edomites. Well, what Arab nation can say? They just got bombed the hell back. Ain't no Arabs going up to the moon. I said these people are crazy. Okay, let me get back on topic. I'm sorry. Shout out to the Yahya brothers and sisters. We love y'all. Go back to where you was at. Ezekiel 25. See, and, and this is what they don't, they don't like this about Esau. Our people will do anything to save them. They will change their race. Yes, sir. Read that. Ezekiel 25, start at 12. Verse, Ezekiel 25, verse 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance. They took vengeance by enslaving us. Go ahead. And have greatly offended. And they've greatly offended. Go ahead. And revenged himself upon them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from teeming. And they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. Here it comes. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. God says I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. By the hand of my people, Israel. By the hand of my people, Israel. So we're going to get a piece of the action, brothers. See, we ain't going to get a piece on this side of the world. But when he gives us, makes us God level, we're going to get a piece. Lord, don't kill them all. Leave some for us. He's going to leave a whole lot for us. Read that, read that, read that. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. And they shall do an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. You know why it says his anger and his fury? Because we got, we, right now we ain't right. Right now we ain't, we'll see, we'll, uh, you might beat up a, a, a male Edomite. You might stomp him right now. But when the Lord says, okay, now, Miss Laura. Now some of y'all, y'all know y'all should deal with white women. Some of y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, right, Malachi? Yeah. So uh, I have no idea y'all looking at the about. white women. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if I could do it, Lord. What about the little baby? I, Lord, Lord, it, it, it's a cute little baby. I don't know. That's why it says you're going to do it according to my anger, the Lord says. Why? What does that mean? I want you to think for a second. Because right now we got man eyes. He going to give us in that day God level eyes. You know what that means by God level? You'll be able to look at a person and see all the SH they done did in their past. Nobody's going to escape. And you're going to see a little, a little baby. You're going to see the soul of what that child done did to us. That's it's going to be God level time. Ain't nobody going to escape. See, I know it's too, this is too deep for people. What are you talking about? There was a movie. Let me help you out. There was a movie. If y'all ever get a chance, there's a movie called Frailty. Where the Edomite was just killing people. And, he, and he's nurses and doctors and lawyers. And his kids were like, Dad, what are you doing? And he was saying these are evil people. And one kid understood what his father said. The other one said, my daddy's crazy. At the end of the movie, they showed you all the secret crimes those people was doing. The murders they, was, they were doing. And he was slaughtering them. But the dude had a little crazy. So he saw... What nobody else could see what they had done secretly and in private. So my point with saying that is on this day, what we're reading about here, when he says they're going to do according to mine anger, God going to put that spirit. We're going to see what God sees. We ain't going to see with the little flesh and blood eyes we got because we see carnally. You, we're going to see things spiritually in that day. We're going to know all their names in the past. You was called this, and this day, in this day and age, you was this, and this is what you done did. And I see it. Now it's time for judgment. You dead! <laughs> Read that again. See, I didn't get nervous. Oh. What the hell is this going on in your? Read verse 14 again. Let me stay off that. Ezekiel, chapter 25. Wait, verse... This is getting nervous now. I ain't talking crazy. I'm just telling you future events. Ezekiel 25. We're verse... just reading the book, sisters. Don't worry. This is reading the book. Verse 14. Verse 14. And I will lay my See, vengeance. See, these things we're reading about, you ain't going to read in a Christian church. Right. All you get is John 3, 16, all day, all day, all day. Read that, verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. Mm. And they shall do an Edom according to mine anger 
and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. But what about the Bible says, vengeance is God, saith the Lord. Yeah, vengeance is the Lord's. And on this day, he's going to give us a taste. That's right. He said, Lord, say, okay, I had enough. You, you go on. Follow up behind me. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Back to uh, Psalms 18, verse 39. What verse was you at in Psalms 18? Um, 42 now. We almost done. Psalms 18, and we was in verse what? what 40, 42. 42. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 18, verse 42. Here come. Then did I beat them small as the dust of before the wind. I don't know wind. about you. I ain't got time to be depressed when I read this stuff. I wake up, I think about this stuff. I go, yes, Lord. I, mean, I can't wait for that day. I ain't sitting around moping. I, I'm, read I again. want this to come to pass yesterday. Go ahead. I'll read This it should again. give you hope. And your sons should be trusting in your daughters should be trusting in this. Sitting about wait, wait, waiting for the next uh, soap opera to come on. Waiting for the next basketball game. You know, are you insane? Come on. Then niggas did... don't sit there like monkeys playing on the court. Running up and jump niggas, jump my niggas are jumping. Look at Jordan. Whoa, look at that nigga jump. He put the ball in the hoop. This is crazy. It's insane. We're going to get it. Come on, read on. Where were you at? Verse 42. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. Mm. I did cast them out as the dirt. In the streets. We're going to cast the nations out like dirt in the streets. The same way they did to us. Did, not, did they not treat our ancestors like dirt in the streets? Yes, Three-fifths of a man. We're nothing. They spit on us. Pissed on us. Speaking of, yeah. Still doing it. Speaking of piss. Oh, no. Speaking of piss. Wow. Bring it out. I'm sorry. <laughs> the white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. Can you send him the... Can, I need y'all to see this. Y'all ain't going to believe me when I tell you this thing. I'm sorry. Hey, y'all stop. Go ahead and talk. I got to find an article because you won't believe me. Hey, this is, this, is, uh, this is beautiful what we're reading. And just like Bishop brought out and just like many of us know that they're not going to bring these scriptures out in church. And we're reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible. And all over the Bible is talking about the, the, the vengeance that the Most High is going to get. Just like he got on the Pharaoh, he used flies, he used locusts. This time he's going to get his vengeance through his people, the Israelites. So that's a beautiful thing, all right? Now, I know Bishop, I was just whispering to him some scriptures. He, I think he got them in his lesson. So I'm going to lean back on that because I know it's coming. But it's some good stuff, some good stuff. So, um, you know, this is uh, wonderful stuff here. Now... Bishop, get ready to put up something that's going to disgust the hell out. It's going to disgust. It's going to disgust you. Uh, uh, Elisha, I just sent it to you. <laughs> please, please. Because I know the Christians in here ain't going to believe me when I say it. So we got we to gotta let the media. Let the media. Let the media say it for me. For you Christians. Let's see if vocab. What's that devil's name? Mark Reiser. Do a video on this. You devil. Put it on the screen. Read that, Amaziah. Put on the, wait till it's on the screen. Well-known North Carolina pastor accused of urinating on sleeping woman on plane. Go on down. This was October 14th. Like yesterday. Yeah, like yesterday. Right. Wait, what, what is today's date? Yeah, that's like a couple of days ago. Yeah, a couple of days ago. Go ahead. A well-known pastor from North Carolina is accused of relieving himself on a sleeping woman in the backseat of a Delta plane as she returned to Detroit from Las Vegas. And let me show you how evil Esau is. They didn't give the well-known pastor's name, right. race, or church. Or his picture. Or his photo. You know if it was one of us. Yeah, Our face, name, the church be everywhere. But not for the white. That's how you know it's the, the right. devil. They'll manufacture stuff against us. Stuff that ain't even true in exactly. front of what our faces in it. Right. They want to talk to people. Right. Read. Alicia Beverly had just spent a great time in Vegas and could not wait to get home Monday night. They were on the red-eye flight, and pretty much everyone was asleep. Right, that's like one in the morning around that time. Go including ahead. her. Ali Alicia said she was curled up in a back seat next to her sister when suddenly she woke up to the feeling of being urinated on. Raise it up, raise on, it up. Come on, come on, let's go. It felt warm, like on the side of me. I felt something warm, she said. In her sleepy haze, right at eye level, she saw something very unexpected. I jump up and I seen his private area out. 
And I screamed, and that woke everybody up, Alicia said. By that time, I actually looked at him, and I said, I see him shake himself off. And I'm like, this man just peed on me. I looked, and there was a puddle of pee in the seats. She screamed and got the attention of everyone on the plane, including an off-duty officer who rushed over and restrained the man, a well-known pastor from North Carolina. Wait, you in North Carolina? That ain't yeah. you, y'all, sub, right? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> According to sources, I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah, that respond, caught, that don't respond. Off guard. <laughs> Raise I it up, even... Song. According to sources, the pastor had an apparent reaction to a sleep aid. Wait, now that's a lie. You know how you're on a plane, you brothers. You know, you sitting there. Number one. She's sitting here. The man and her are facing this way. You know you got a point and aim when you pee. Right, right. In order for the pee to go this way, he had to turn it this way. And shook it on her. And then shook it on her. So this white man, he's a liar. About, it, he had a reaction to a sleep aid. That means if, if, if that was true, he would have urinated on himself and the pee would have went down between his feet. Right, right, Not right. to the left or to the right. Right. The white man's the devil, the Bible speaks The of. mere fact that they wrote this article like that shows you that they're in cahoots with disrespecting black people. Yes. Right. That's what I mean. They have no respect for us at all. Right. And that's the reason why this vengeance is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. we, that's the reason why it's wonderful. I can't wait for it. That's going to be a good thing. He didn't say anything the whole time he was standing there, Alicia said. Alicia said after being treated like a bathroom, she sat in those wet clothes for several hours before landing at Detroit Sm Metro. Imagine smelling like piss. Oh, it's so right. piss. That's right. That little nasty somebody stuff. Somebody else's pee. Yeah. The hell is this? You might be used to your own pee, right. but it's somebody, somebody else's. else's. The hell is this? Go ahead. The pastor was taken into custody, but hasn't been charged yet. You see this? He won't be charged. That's why they didn't give his name. That's why they didn't give nothing. No pictures, no nothing. Exactly. Go ahead. The FBI handles incidents in the air, and they will make a decision on charges. Raise it up. Alicia naturally is filled with anxiety. I left work yesterday because I couldn't stay, but I had to tell them why I needed to leave. It was a lot. My anxiety was really high, literally. Since then, I have only gotten four hours of sleep, she said. She says she's grateful the officer who was there took charge of the pastor, and something is being done for his actions. The pastor's camp has decided not to comment on the story. So they're just trying to play mums to work. But so, she need to get on YouTube or something and, and say this is what he looks like. Put his picture up. Everything. I see we got, what do we got over here? Y'all getting some research? Y'all got the research, I think the research maybe they team put his going picture on? Up. We need to put them on blast. Let me see. Okay, where was we at, Amazon? I forgot. Uh, we went back to Psalms 18, verse 20, verse Just 42. Just to show that we 100% biased, Bishop. Even if it is Jake, we're putting him on blast, too. That's right, because that's nasty. Where we at? Psalms 80, 18, verse 42. Mm, go ahead. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Wait, 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 wait. What verse you at? I wasn't paying attention. Kaliah just sent me something and there's no picture. I'll go what back was to you just reading? That was verse 43. 43. Read thou, again. thou has delivered me from the strivings of the people. And thou has made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto Watch me. Watch Give me that in Isaiah. Give me that in uh, Isaiah uh, 60. Isaiah 60. Uh, 10 down. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 60, verse 10. 
and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. Y'all stop talking on that while I'm looking for stuff. See, people's texting me. It's a cracker. I'm sorry. It's the devil. <laughs> damn. Oh, Found it. You damn nasty summer mother. So she had Edomite pee on her. Damn. Hey, okay, we're going to leave that alone for a moment. We're going to leave it alone. Y'all pray for us. Where we at? We in verse 11, Isaiah 60 and 11. Isaiah 68, you said? 60, verse oh, 60, 11. 60, verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Right. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And in case there's a Christian listening, that's the, give me that in Revelation 21. It says the same thing. You know what I want? It says that gate shall be open continually. You old sloppy Christians. What, what, do you want? what verse? Um, bear with me, I'm looking. What was you just reading? That was verse 11. Okay. 2125. Revelation 2125. Uh, Revelation right, just chapter, in your Bibles, right in your Bible. Revelation chapter 21, verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. That's it. What the Paul is saying uh, then it shall not be shut. And a nation shall bring them. I, I, that's the next I'm verse. I'm not looking at it. Go I, ahead. I, I got it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. God level. That's God level. When we beat these nations so bad, we're going to force them to bring the, what, their wealth to us. Because guess what? Their wealth is our wealth. That's right. Go ahead. Was that it? Yes, sir. Going back to Isaiah 60. Uh, 60. Verse 11. Isaiah 60, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. You see what Isaiah is explaining in detail? In Revelation, is very abbreviated. That's why I always tell you, the New Testament is an abbreviation of Old Testament prophecies. You need the Old Testament, which explains things in greater detail. Read it again. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Meaning wealth of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. And their kings going to be brought down in servitude as well. Come on. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Uh -huh. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. They'll never read this to you in church. Never. We're going to be on God level like never before. Remember, Adam was who? God. Son of God. Son of God. The, the scripture says, um, what, what did we go to? We went to, uh, that was Luke 3. Uh, in Genesis 6, it says we were, it said, we were called what? The sons of God. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, God said about us, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. We also read Psalms 82, verse 6. Ye are gods, but you shall die like men. But guess what? Now we've, we're going to be judged by the Lord. Meaning what? This judgment is going to be your righteous judgment where he gives us power. That's what Revelation 2, he said, Christ, I will give you the morning star. He's going to light our candle. Turn up that spiritual side of us. Okay? We don't, where was you at? Um, verse 13 now. Uh -huh. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, mm -hmm. the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify, beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee. The sons also of them that afflicted thee. That's the white man, Esau, Edom. The Chinese, the Japanese, the uh, Arabs, that's Ishmael, and the Hamites. All nations afflicted us. Go ahead. Shall come bending unto thee. Mm -hmm. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Read. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the mm. Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? They're going to come bending unto us. Okay. They're going to bow the knee. We're going to make sure that. Give me that in John 10, 35. Hey, you know what just came to my mind? Where's the scripture in Isaiah? I know it's Isaiah in the last verses, chapters, where it says, uh, 
They shall carry our sons and daughters. They shall know them. Where is it? Somebody help me. 49, you said? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, set up a clinic, and they shall bring their sons and their king. Mm, let me see, Isaiah. Is it 66 and 20? Yeah, bear with no, me no, a second. No, I got it. Isaiah 61, verse 9. Let me look at it first. Let me look at it. 61 verse, ah, that's it right there. This is God level. This is God level. Read this thing. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. You know what this means? Whatever city or kingdom God gives us, all the nations going to know us and our wives and children by name. Read it again. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Read. And their offspring among the people. Your children going to be known. That's such and such as children. They're going to know who our sons and daughters are. And when our kids walk down the street, you know what they're going to do? Bow the knee and move the hell out the way. That's some God level, baby. Come on. All that see them shall acknowledge them. Do you see this? All that see us shall acknowledge us. Go ahead. That they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. They're going to say, this is the seed mm. that God has blessed. Give me that Zephaniah 3.19. Zephaniah 3.19. That's right. All praise. All praise. Come on. Zephaniah 3.19. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 19. They ain't going to read this to you in church. Don't hold your breath. Come on. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee. All the nations that afflict us going to be undone because God going to give us power. Go ahead. And I will save her that halts it. Mm -hmm. That's us. We're the ones that halt. He's going to save us. And gather, gather her that was driven out. Uh -huh. And I will get them praise and fame in every land. Where they have been put to shame. The Lord said, I'm going to give them praise and fame in every land. That's why all nations are going to know, not just us, our offspring, our sons and daughters, our wives. They're going to know us. This is some beautiful stuff right there. This is glory. Go, give me uh, John 10.35. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 35. You know, wait a minute. Something just, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a scripture. Somebody help me. Who knows where it is? It just popped in my mind. There's going to be books written on us. Hey, 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 Malachi, talk. Come on, talk, talk. Books written? I don't know. Oh, please. The... I'm looking at something. <laughs> hey, I was looking at something. Uh, this is some powerful stuff. The, those class should, should strengthen our spirit. Yes, Malachi, I found it. Ezekiel 13, 9. I know you thought I was lying. You didn't believe me. Ezekiel 13, verse. There are going to be books written on us. Y'all thought the, the Acts of the Apostles was done? No, we're still in the book of Acts, and it's going to be recorded in heaven. Read that thing. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9. And mine hand shall be upon the prophet's that see vanity. That's these pastors. Go ahead. And that divine lies. That's these popes and reverends and ministers. Go ahead. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Here come. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Do y'all see this thing right here? They ain't going to be written. They ain't going to be written in the writings of Israel. This is some glory right here. Yes, sir. There's going to be books on the men and women that make it out of here. And what they went through, and how they survived, and how they made it, how they got over. Ain't that old church song, How I Got Over? Yeah. What are you going to say, y'all? What's up? Yeah, going to be some new chronicles on the earth right there. Read from niggas to gods. That's gods right. rise, baby. Gods rise. Come on with that, John 10, 35. Mm -mm -mm. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 35. If he called them gods... Unto whom the word of Read God... Read the verse above it. Read the verse above it. Verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are God's... So never think the Old, Te Old Testament writings is... Uh, uh, what's the word? Done away with. Done away with. Oh, obsolete. That's what I look for. Obsolete. Uh-uh. Christ, everything Christ said was based on the Old Testament writings. Have you lost your minds? 
Christ was quoting, quoting Psalms 82 verse 6. He said, in your law, is it not written, I said, ye are gods. He was talking about the men, these Israelite men and women, they are gods. Give me that now. Uh, Zephaniah 12 and 8. Yeah, okay, read 35. Read 35. I'm not looking at it. So verse 35. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you know why that's heavy? Thank you, Amaziah. When it says the scripture cannot be broken, you can't change what has been prophesied. You can vote, you can dance, you can march, you can sample your way through the streets. It ain't changing nothing. The Bible says we're gods. I know they look down on us today. We, ain't, we don't look like nothing. We out of shape. We're sick. Some of us got the damn COVID. Half of us got all kind of ailments. The Bible, don't worry about that. He said, I'm going to help you, Jacob. You worm, I'm going to help you. He said, we're going to be changed. God level. That's what I'm waiting on right there, that thing right there. So go back to uh, Zephaniah 12 and 8. Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah. We're almost done. Zechariah 12 and 8, please. The book Zechariah. of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. See, that, that's what we've been reading in Psalms 18. David was prophesying at a time that he would live in. David was prophesying about us, our strength being renewed as in the days of old. The Bible says he that is feeble going to be like David. Read. And the house of David shall be as God. And the house of David, that's the 144, shall be as God's. Wow. See, the, the church ain't going to tell us this stuff. They ain't going to teach us this stuff. They want to keep us as Negroes and Latinos and Hispanics and Indians. No, no. We God level. We waiting on God level. In order to get that God level, we got to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. That's what we got to do. Give me that 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Did you finish that? I lost it. I you lost it. Give me 1 Corinthians. Okay, drop that. 1 Corinthians 15, 49 to 54. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy. The, the image of the earthy is these bodies we got now. We have borne the image of the earthy. Go ahead. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We're going to bear the image of the heavenly. God level. That's what the apostle Paul was talking about. He talking about we walk on these earthly bodies now that we drop dead in a moment. Don't worry about that. We're going to bear the image of the heavenly. We're going to have God level bodies. Right. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Jump over to verse 40. Jump over to verse 40. Verse 40. Wait, wait, bear a second. Jump over to verse 37. Verse 37. Get your scripture ready, I'll stop that you had. Go ahead. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. So now what's Paul's talking another mystery? He said, you sow seed in the ground, it has one type of body. But in time, that body from the seed changes to another body. Read it again so we can see it. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. It may become wheat or some other type of grain. So Paul is speaking a mystery. He's talking about us. Read. Verse 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Uh-oh, come on. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Can y'all tell the, um, the, what are these guys that say we come from monkeys and baboons? The Darwin, the Darwin theory. All that garbage. Read that again, 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Another flesh of beasts. Another of fishes. And another of birds. Watch this, here come. There are also celestial bodies. Celestial bodies is God level bodies. Celestial bodies is God level. Go ahead. And bodies terrestrial. Terrestrial is what we got now. 
These are terrestrial bodies, earthly bodies, weak bodies. Go ahead. But the glory of the celestial is one, mm -hmm. and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Mm -hmm. So, so also is the resurrection of the dead. What we've been talking about all day is the resurrection time. The resurrection of the dead. We're the dead. Go ahead. It is sown in corruption. It is sown and is grown in corruption, corruptible bodies. It is raised in incorruption. It is raised in incorruption. Go ahead. It is sown in dishonor. We are born here in dishonor. It is raised in glory. We're going to be raised in glory. That's God level. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. These bodies we got as weak as hell. It is raised in power. We're going to be raised in power. God level. God level. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Mm -hmm. It is raised a spiritual That's body. That's that celestial body, that God body. Go ahead. There was a natural body and there was a spiritual body. Come on. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Read. The last Adam, which was, is Christ. He's talking about Christ right now. Was made a quickening spirit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. From there, Isaiah 61 and 1, we almost out of here. No, I, after this, y'all, you get what you got right there. Come on, Isaiah 61, 1. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That's our job, brothers, to a preach. To, he anointed us to preach good tidings unto the meek, the meek of the humble. Those men and women that are meek to the laws of God. To be meek to the laws of God means we going to do what is written. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are we not the brokenhearted? We are the brokenhearted people. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty to the captives. We are to proclaim liberty to the captives of our people. All because our people are captive under Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And we are prophesying about a day when this prison called the United States of America is open and our people are delivered. Every last man, woman, boy, girl that repents in the name of the Lord. Come on. To, pro to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. We are to proclaim the day of vengeance of our God is coming. I don't know what the hell these preachers are talking about. But the day of vengeance is what we're supposed to be prophesying about. Go ahead. To comfort all that mourn. Because that type of preaching comforts all our people that mourn. The only way we can help the families of the kinsfolk of Breonna Taylor's, Philando Castile's, the uh, Tamir Rice's, the uh, Trayvon Martin's, Trayvon Martin's, the um, George Floyd's, we got to preach the day of vengeance. That's what we got to do. Preach the day of vengeance and comfort because that is a comfort to all that mourn. Go ahead. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. See, it ain't talking about everybody. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, which is another name for Israel. Go ahead. To give unto them beauty for ashes. We're going to get beauty for ashes. I know we, some of us here think we look good. God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes because you're all busted right now. Every man, woman, and boy, I know. Look at you. He says, not me. I look good. No. <laughs> you busted too. That little pink lip over there. Everybody busted. We all busted. Some of us in here look like buckwheat. Some of the sisters, no, they be talking about the brothers. He look like buckwheat. You got some nerve. You got some nerve, sister. <laughs> but that's all right. The Bible says he's going to give us beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Now, that's, you, guys, you got to ponder about that thing. Malcolm made a statement. He said, who taught you to hate yourself? We've been taught to hate the way we look, everything about ourselves. But there's going to come a day the Lord said, don't worry. Because they wouldn't compare us to monkeys. Right, right. They put a picture up. You know what I'm talking about, Malachi. You know what I'm talking about. They put a monkey, a monkey up next to your face and make mockery. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. You're going to be beautified in that day. You're welcome. You're welcome. We all going to get it. All us, right, 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 little Malachi, right? We're going to get that statue back too. We're going to be God level, God level. Ain't nobody going to ever look down on us. You're going to see Malachi. Look at this Malachi right there. You're going to get strong legs that day. That is Malachi. You're going to get the strong No, not that Malachi. Mordecai. I'm oh, talking Mordecai. about Mordecai. Oh, the, oh, Mordecai. I'm Mordecai. sorry. Mordecai. Little Mordecai right there. They're going to look up at you, Mordecai. That's Mordecai right there. You all praise it to the Lord. All of us. Little terrible bodies we got. We out of shape. We feel, got gas and all kind of stuff wrong with us. 
Don't worry, my teeth gonna be fixed too on that day. I ain't worried. I'm done meditating on this. It's I'm gonna give you beauty. And you sisters with them saggy. Well, let me be quiet. We gonna read on. Let me read on. Read on. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. We all gonna be beautified. Every man and woman, we gonna be beautified in this day. Go ahead. And you the, short brothers too. I ain't talking about short in height. Sisters know what I'm talking about. You short brothers, you gonna be all right in that day. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. The <laughs> oil of joy. For morning. We're going to get oil of joy for morning. All oh, praises, all oh, praises. Come on. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know what the spirit of heaviness is? Depression. We're going to get the garment of praise for the spirit of depression. Go ahead. That they might be called trees of righteousness. We're going to be trees of righteousness. Go ahead. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Because him planting us glorifies him. Why? Because we are his people. That second Ezra was saying, but we are your people. Look how we are. Isaiah complained, look, we are your people, Lord. But we at the bottom and these heathen are reigning over us. Go ahead. Verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes. Mm -hmm. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. Read. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The other nation is going to stand and feed our flocks. Go ahead. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen. Yeah, the white man's the son of the alien. They're the real aliens. Right. They're going to be our plowmen and, and dress our vine dresses. Go ahead. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dresses. Come on. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. And that day we're going to be real priests of the Lord. Go ahead. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. God level, God level. They're going to call us the ministers of our God. Go ahead. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. We're going to boast ourselves when we take in their wealth, because their wealth is our wealth. It ain't going to be no why you bragging. We're going to brag. We're going to boast. That's right. Come on, y'all. So what you got for us? I was just going into, uh, this is going to be perfect revenge. The most I want is perfect revenge. He don't want to leave it up to us. I'm just going to hit a couple of scriptures. Go, to, go back to Ezekiel, what we read earlier, because I just need a little piece of that. Ezekiel 25, 14. I need that thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ezekiel 25, 14, because the most I said that he was going to undo the afflictions. He was going to undo the things that were done to us. We've suffered all kinds of uh, psychological hangups, watching our people get murdered. Watching our women get mistreated, peed on, and stuff like that. All kind of stuff that's going on. The Most High has got the sweet, perfect vengeance. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. And the Most High said he's going to lay his vengeance upon Edom. And upon all the nations, like it's in Obadiah. All of the nations going to drink the cup. Read. By the hand of my people, Israel. Go ahead. And they shall do and eat them according to mine anger. The reason why the most I say he wants us to do it according to his anger because he wants the revenge to be perfect. We might mess up. We might not get it right. The most I said, no, I'm going to make sure you get it perfectly. We're going we're gonna to read how perfect it's going to be. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read. And they shall do and eat them according to mine anger. And, they, and we shall do and eat them in all the nations according to God's anger. That's perfect revenge. That's how. That's the therapy that we need after all of this craziness that we went through. Here we watched a man get choked to death on the on the ground with an officer's knee on this man's neck, and he crying out for his mother. And all of us felt that. All of his dead mother, he crying out for his deceased mother. We all felt that thing. The most I saw it too. Is that it? No, sir. Read. And according to my fury. And according to God's fury, not our fury. Our fury ain't good enough. The most I said I need it to be perfect fury. We're going to read about this perfect fury. Come on. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. That's going to be considered God's vengeance. And we're going to be happy about that thing. I'm going to prove it. Give me Psalms 149. Psalms 149. Read from uh, verse 5 down. Psalm chapter 149, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. The saints are the Israelites and be joyful in glory. Glory is the kingdom of heaven. Only the Israelites are going to rejoice in the Most High's glory. 
the kingdom of heaven. Read. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Because we're going we, we to wake up, give orders, and go back to sleep. We're going to wake up, <laughs> give orders, and go back to sleep. That's the beautiful, on our beds. Read. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of the Bible be in our mouths. Go ahead. And a two-edged sword in their hand. And we're going to have a killing instrument in our hands. This is the beauty. This, this is the perfect vengeance right here. Go to, ahead. To execute. Because you got to think about it. We were talking about undoing the afflictions. They used to, when they used to walk down the street, because we were talking about our little kids and how they got to deal, you know. They used to make us jump off the sidewalk and walk in the gutter when they walked by. Over generations that will produce inferiority complexes to you, your wife, in front of your wives, your children. We had to do this. Grown men had to step off the sidewalk and walk in the gutter and your wife is with you. And she right. see you do this. Right. That just brings a, a, a whole whole bevy of traumas and disrespect and all kinds of, of messed up uh, self-esteem issues. They're going to pay for all of that. Perfect, perfect vengeance. Read. Verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. What are we going to do with this sword? Execute vengeance upon the heathen. That's God's vengeance. We're going to execute vengeance upon the nations. Go ahead. And punishments upon the people. The Mosai said we got to get punishments upon the people. So they're going to get, they all going into captivity and slavery. That's therapy. You ain't going to get no therapy laying on somebody's couch. The therapy going to come when this stuff gets executed. And, and the therapy begins with this Bible. That's where the therapy begins. Read. To bind their kings with chains. See, that's instant therapy right there. Right. To put right. chains on your enemies. That's a beautiful thing. Right. The clamp, they have fitting rooms of different chains, size chains. One for their collars, their head, everything else. Right. Different garments. Garments of pure chains. Right, right, right. That's wonderful. Hey, you fitting know, rooms. You know huh? in the movie uh, Birth of a Nation, <laughs> yeah. uh, Remember when they whooped the hell out of Nat Turner? Yes. And after they whooped him, right. they said, you learned your lesson, boy? Yeah, yeah. And he smiled he and smiled started to laugh. He was thinking you know, about he was, this right here. That's right. He was that's thinking what he was about thinking this. About. <laughs> this is what was on his mind. Come on. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Their kings and their princes, their Prince Charles this, their uh, Queen Elizabeth II, oh. that, all of them, chains on them. That's wonderful. Just imagine that. Come on. To execute upon them the judgment written. And what are we doing? We're doing what God has written in the Bible. To execute upon all of the nations the judgment written. Written by God. This is the part that I wanted right here. Read. This honor have all his saints. This is the beautiful part about it. The Most High is honoring Israel. Man. This honor have all his. He, the Lord is going to honor us by allowing us to put our enemies in chains. I got some more. It, 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 oh, it says, come on. Praise, praise ye the Lord. Lord. Thank God that that's written in God's judgment. How can I leave that out? Thank God that that's written, that that's the oracles of God that has to be the perfect judgment that the Most High is going to bring. Psalms 140, I mean, Psalms 137. Uh -oh. Psalms 137. I'm, I'm saving the best one for last. Yes, sir. Psalms 137, verse 7, down. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it. Because when the Babylonians came in and destroyed Israel, the Edomites was there helping, doing the destruction. So they all going to get it. Read. Who said, raise it, raise it. Destroy it, destroy it. Even to the foundation thereof. That's what they did to us. Go ahead. Oh, daughter of Babylon. This is Edom, him particularly, because he's, he's, the, he's the ringleader of all of the evil that happened to us. Come on. Who ought to be destroyed. That's their lot, who ought to be destroyed, because they are the vessels of God's wrath. That's the reason why it's written that way. They were made, they were, they were fitted to be destroyed. That's what that means. They were made, they were created for God's destruction. They was fitted and made to be the channel of God's destruction. You need to ponder on that statement. Their whole reason for being on this earth is to be the channel of God's anger. Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be. Why are we going to be happy? Because God going to put that in our spirit. This ain't going to be according to what we want. The most I say, you're going to be happy when you do this because I'm making it so. 
I want, it, I want you to do it this way. Perfect vengeance. What does it say? Happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. So we're going to be happy to bash their babies up against stones. The bus heads wide open and grab, uh, grab more babies and smash them up. You know, That's some the, of the, you know some of the sisters the, the, saying that I, I, ain't right. No, That's not no, right. it is perfect vengeance. That's, That's right. perfect. It's clap. more than right. Clap. It's perfect. I don't care if they don't want to clap. <laughs> it's perfect vengeance. It's perfect vengeance. Hey, that's why the bottom of verse 8 says, Happy shall he be that rewarded right. thee as thou hast served. Because they did that to us. They did, right. that, they to did that to us. And they got pictures of, it, of them doing it to us. Exactly. Postcards and all that. So it's going to go down because that's, that's the reason why the most I say, listen, y'all move out the way. I want y'all to do it according to what I want. I want it perfectly done. What does it say? Read that again. That, that last verse. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. That's the gospel. That's right. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Psalms 58 and 10. Then I'm closing you it You know up. the word gospel just means good news. That's good, that's, that's good this, news right there. Isaiah 61 hey. said we're supposed to comfort all that more. Right. This is comfort. This is comfort. It said this is happy news. <laughs> happy happy, news, happy right. joy, joy. Happy, happy, <laughs> happy gospel. Right. The gospel, good news, happy news. Read. <laughs> Psalm chapter 58, verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. The Bible says that the righteous shall, re shall rejoice when we see if the vengeance. Wow. Go ahead. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. We're going to be happy. See, we ain't happy. You, we get to thinking about washing our feet in the blood of wicked. Now we're like, damn, I don't want to get all this blood on me. Some of you might be thinking that way. The most I said that day, you're going to be happy to do that. We're going to be dancing in people's blood. All oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's righteous anger. That's therapy. That's what we need. That's going to clear up all of this inferiority, post-traumatic slave. It's going to clear all that up. So we ain't going to need the white man we go No, no, we ain't going to need none of that at all. That's how you, that's how you get out of this craziness. We ain't going to need no Xanax. We ain't going to need no Xanax, nothing. That's going to be the therapy right there. And they ain't going to be able to look up, period. That's right. right. They said their faces, they have to have their heads bow down all the time. That's right. Their head going to be stuck down. They can't even, if they even lift their head up once, we're going to cut five heads off just because you did it. <laughs> that's, hey, that's the same right. thing. What is that's that, what Revelation 3-9? Right. right. That's Revelation 3 9 said, says that. Don't think it's right. shocking. Mm -mm. Isaiah uh, it's, 45 says the same. It said, He lifted his head up, so 10 of y'all got to get your heads cut off. That's right. <laughs> All praises. All praises. Hey, let's get a Lord of Hand. All praises. Praise That's right. Lord. That's right. Give it on the head. That's right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.